Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadists for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Secular Jihadists for a Muslim Enlightenment. My name is Ali Rizvi. With me is Armin Navabi. Armin, how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm good. He's good. So, yeah, and uh, so we're going to be talking to, to today about why uh, I think, and I, I think, I hope I, Armin will be uh, agreeing with me on this, why freedom of religion should be abolished. Freedom of religion not the concept of freedom of religion, but the actual legal entity, freedom of religion. So right now it's a distinct legal concept. Uh, it's in the US uh, Constitution. It's in the First Amendment, freedom of religion. It's also in uh, the Canadian uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's in a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, secular pluralistic or secular countries. Um, it's part of their constitutions. So the thing is, do we really need it? Is it superfluous? Is it is it something that is it's, isn't it kind of redundant? Because you know we have freedom of speech, we have freedom of assembly, uh, you have freedom of association, freedom of thought. Doesn't it already cover freedom of religion? And uh, if so, why are we carving out a special case for freedom of, freedom of religion? Uh, we're going to make the argument here that uh, that privileges religion, and it shouldn't. And there's no reason. To privilege one idea uh, over another when we've got freedom of expression for all ideas. I think freedom of religion is completely covered by all of these things. So, Armin, do you have any starting thoughts on it? No, I, I think you already changed my mind on this because I originally, when you said this, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, we're on the side of freedom of like, and like, but as soon as you explained it, I was like, oh crap, I never thought about it like that. And I think, and I think like, immediately you would change my mind on this um which is very interesting i never thought about it this way like yeah why do we why is this separate like as somebody that has been so anti-religion i'm surprised that i never thought like you know what if we have a special case for religion compared to all other ideas like why like why don't we have like the freedom to express your love for knitting as a special Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we don't have that. Like, <laughs> why is it this specific group of why? Like we're like we're exactly. saying we're saying all ideas should be you should be able to express them freely, and you have that already covered. Freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, uh, all the. Uh, but then we have like a special case for religion. Like why is it that this group of ideas that has something to do with being having connected to divinity or like why why are they special like why are not some other group of why don't we have a special case for like political ideas right why don't we like why why don't we have that right um or medical mm -hmm. like oh freedom of expression of your views on medicine or freedom of expression on your views on the tv shows that you like we don't have special categories for that we're just like hey freedom of expression of ideas like freedom of conscience as a whole and especially given that it just seems like this is go too much government. This is the government endorsing a certain other ideas like, hey, we know we have freedom of conscience, freedom of expression. But this, these ideas are so special that we need to emphasize it double free <laughs> compared to other ones. Yeah. And uh, to me, that's actually now that I think about it, that's basically the government. Um, giving legitimacy to divine authority because this is like they're giving, oh, giving this preference. Is preference it's actually yeah. saying freedom of religion you should be freer to express your religious views than you should be this free to other things like it's yeah this is an animal far farm thing all animals are equal but some are more equal this is more equal than saying, others, yeah. then this is basically saying all ideas are free but some are more free. That's basically Another. it. Like, okay, so but the counter argument to all of this could be that 
What's the harm? Is... Yeah, what's the harm? Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. actually, I was thinking of something else, but let's focus on that first. Uh, the second one is that um, the religion were specifically a greater target yeah. um, compared to other ideas, like religious persecution. When it comes to I, when it comes to author, uh, um, authoritative government going after ideas, religious persecution needs to be highlighted more because that was. You know, whether it's Catholics going after Protestants, whether That's it's right. Shias going after Sunnis, or Sunnis going after Shias, when it's going after the Jews or whatever, it, these are uh, these are ideas. The religious ideas have been specifically used as a way to target people more than other ideas and that's why that it needs to be a special case so so so, bo so both of these comebacks what's the harm and also this is this does deserve to be a special case what's what do you think why are you so, to both of these things? so so let's start with the second one first right the idea that you know where did this idea come from why is freedom of religion enshrined in all of these different constitutions and that's exactly where it comes from so I, I would refer, and we're going to put a link to this because, you know, when I started talking about this, and I, I actually first started um, thinking about this when we were talking about circumcision, you know, how people, if I, if I say, you know, I want to cut off my child's ear, the outside of their ear, they can still hear, it's not an issue, uh, it's harmless because, um, you know, I want to prevent some kind of disease of the ear or whatever, right? If I say that, um, then... I'll get thrown in jail and my child will be taken away from me. But if I want to cut off the end of a functional organ, a functional reproductive and excretory organ um, from my child, then it's my religious freedom. So that's an, that's a way in which, that, that's how I started thinking about it. And then I was actually, uh, Leon Korteweg, right, our friend, um, mm -hmm. let, uh, he pointed me uh, to an article by Martin Baudry. Martin Baudry is actually also a friend of mine. He's in Belgium. He's a ph philosopher. And he wrote an excellent article called Abolish the Freedom of Religion. Right? And over there, he actually talks about uh, why this relic of you know, freedom of religion, why it uh, ended up being in these constitutions. And it's exactly because of what you said, Armin. It's because uh, these religious groups were persecuted. Now, the thing is, they were persecuted by other religious groups. Right, Protestants, Catholics, Shias, Sunnis, um, you know, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Jews. Uh, it, it, it was in the vast majority of cases. Right, it was persecution against these religious minorities by religious majorities, and that's why it actually came. You know, the freedom of religion. It became a hallmark of secularism. Um, but you know, the the problem with that is that it's it still privileges a religion religious ideas more than anything else. Uh, again, if you have like the US First Amendment and you have those freedoms, the freedom of speech, thought, expression, association, assembly, if you have all of that and press, you know, then you don't, that protects the rights of those minorities anyway, right? Because they are free to express their views and they're free to practice their religion under those broad principles. So it, it, it shouldn't, it's still, you know, you can still say, that it doesn't apply. You still don't need freedom of religion, right? The the second argument is what's the harm? Okay, supposing you know what's the, we've got these things anyway. You add freedom of religion to it. You talk about it separately. What's the big deal? What harm will it cause? Well, the circumcision thing is another is is one example, right? Another example that Martin gave in his uh, article is uh, that in some European countries, uh, when you stun animals for slaughter, right? That's the way the humane way to do it. Uh, when Jews and Muslims, when they insist on slaughtering animals without stunning, which is a much more torturous and painful process, right? Um, they are allowed to do that because it's their religious freedom, under religious freedom. But if you do it aside from that, if you say it's not because of my religion, you just do it anyway for secular reasons, you are going to get penalized for it. It's illegal. So it actually does what you're saying, that this freedom is freer, that this is more free than the other freedoms. Um, that comes into play immediately, right? So. so so, I think the argument that I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, the religious freedom is usually used, successfully so, by many people, not for freedom of expression, but, 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 for, priv but for religious privilege. That's right. 
It's it's right. used to it's used as a way to discriminate. The, there's a very recent example of this, okay, that happened in the U.S. So as you know, Amy Coney Barrett is a new um, nominee for the Supreme Court by Donald Trump, and she's a sort of a you know she wants to build the kingdom of God, and she's essentially a religious nut job. Um, so you know when <laughs> when uh, I forgot my train of thought, I was going to say something. Yeah. So what happened is that recently, once this nomination came up, two other Supreme Court justices in the U.S. Uh, that's Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, right? Um, both of them put out a statement saying that um, the uh, the ruling that allowed same-sex marriage in all of the U.S., right? It uh, paraphrasing, it essentially needs to be reconsidered. It's unconstitutional because it impinges on the religious freedom of people. It's against li religious liberty, which is a, a right given to Americans in the First Amendment. So, and and right now they're very boldly making that case because currently the U.S. Supreme Court, as of Monday, when she is confirmed, they will have vote to overturn right the legalization of same-sex marriage. Whether they do it or not, I don't. Know, but they will have the votes to overturn it, and they're kind of setting this argument up. That it should be overturned because it impinges on uh, religious liberty, and that's what the problem is. When you can invoke religious freedom, the way to uh, sort of supersede or overrun the freedom of, say, same-sex couples to have the same marriage rights as anybody else, that's when it becomes a problem. So it's not just harmless. It's not just a redundancy where, okay, we're just repeating the same thing twice. It's not. It's actually, yeah. when you make a special case for it, it gives you an excuse to use that right. to justify bigotry and discrimination against other groups. Yeah, so if you have two separate, if you have one category and we just say freedom of expression or freedom of, freedom of conscience or whatever, um, if you just have it under one category, then it's so obvious that because you're, because it's all under one umbrella, you're, we're not encouraging freedom, your freedom to violate other people's freedom, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it only if you put it into two different categories, all of a sudden it becomes a competition of two different set of um, ideas or so two sets of two different, you know, you know, set of rights that people have. Like it's now two different rights competing with each other. Right. So you have yeah. other people's freedoms. And then because you have freedom of religion, you're like, oh, you have these freedoms. But because of my freedom of religion, now my freedom is now competing wow. with your freedom. My right, my right of my right to express my religion is now competing with your right to, I don't know, marry whoever you love or to have this store, to open this, to express yourself over here becomes a competition. But if you move them all under the same category, it becomes more apparent and more uh, obvious and less easy for people to say, well, my right gets to violate your right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be much more difficult for people to make that case to because, if, you know, because it will be self, more obviously self-contradictory. Do you know what I mean? Trump said. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's exactly exactly what the issue is. And, and you know, this is a problem with... Um, just overall, look, pretty much anything today that is non-religious that allows discrimination, that where you can discriminate, like the KKK discriminates against black people and Jews. Uh, there's other groups that discriminate against women. All of those are called out. You know, if you are a secular shop and you don't serve women or you don't serve gay people, then everybody is going to descend on you like a ton of bricks. You may even be liable to uh, you may be susceptible uh, to uh, legal action as well for discrimination. But religion, when people hold on to religion, religion is the only thing in the world right now that is respected and revered by people, that is thought of as a virtue. You know, faith, my religious faith is a virtue that's thought of as a virtue that allows and endorses a discrimination against women, against gay people, against you know, blacks with their, you know, support of slavery and, and the endorsement of slavery in the Bible and the Quran um, against pretty much everybody, against Jews, right? In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Quran, especially, right? You hear, you see that all the time. So 
it, it, it endorses it and it's still alive. And as long as you keep it alive, as long as you keep these major religions alive and you have this freedom of religion, you're always going to have a legal and constitutional basis to find a way to discriminate against these groups. It's going to happen. And Susanna actually has uh, put up uh, Justice Thomas's comment here, and this is what he wrote. Um, and this is, again, just a week or two ago. Uh, Obergefell, Obergefell is the name of the case. I think it was Obergefell versus Hodges or something like that. Enables courts and governments to brand religious adherents who believe that marriage is between one man and one woman as bigots, making their religious liberty concerns that much easier to dismiss. Yeah, this is classic case of my my freedom, my religious rights gets to violate your rights. Like, and this is coming when we. This is coming from the highest court in the most powerful country in the world, right? Um, I mean, it doesn't get worse than this. One, the secular country, the highest court, the most powerful nation on earth, and this is the most, you know, the greatest. Basically, there is. This is the closest thing that we get to. Um, you know, judicial authority, right? Like the mm -hmm. highest level of judicial authority and, and the and the goddamn planet. And what yeah. they're arguing, what these people are plan arguing is that, you know, legalizing gay marriage means we need to worry about Christians being called bigots. That's what we need to protect if we legalize, <laughs> if we legalize this stuff, right? If mm -hmm. we legalize, so if we give the freedom for gay men and women to marry each other, that freedom, we're concerned about giving them that freedom because some Christians are going to be labeled as bigots if they express their views. This is yeah. the best, This and this is what we're getting here. That's basically the argument here. Yeah, that's, no, that, yeah. that's insane. That's insane. It, it is. It's, it's absolutely insane. And so one of the things with religion is the, the privilege. Of the, when we talk about religious persecution, if you look historically, like there is a persecution of religious minorities, but and you got to remember, like this is one of these. It came out of these Enlightenment values, right? The U.S. Constitution. Thomas Jefferson was part of the whole Enlightenment thinker crew, um, and the Enlightenment was given way to by uh, you know like many many years of religious conflict, right? Going from the Dark Ages uh, to through the Reformation into the Enlightenment. So that that played a big part in it. But if you look at especially the discrimination against um, gay people, right? You know, when when you have a word like the discriminatory discriminatory word for 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 gay people, which can I spell it out? F a g g. Yes, OG, right. So that word, what that word actually means, and I know this. Like as a pathologist, I know that when you look in leukemia, there are these cells in a certain kind of leukemia called. F-A-G-G-O-T cells, okay? They're called that. That's the medical term for them. Why? Because they have these uh, these bundles of rods inside the cells when you look at them under the microscope. These bundles of rods, a bundle of sticks is what the literal meaning of that word is, okay? And what were those sticks used for? They were used to, to throw into fires. They used to throw those sticks into fires, right, to keep the fire going, these bundles of sticks. That's what F-A-G-G-O-T means. So. The reason gay people were started, people started calling them that, is because they used to throw gay people into the fires. What are you serious? They used to burn them alive. Is that the? I, I know. I mean, is that the reason? Be, the reason. That's the, the reason. Name? Yes, um, that's the reason that they're called that. Yeah. Look at do Google F A G G O T cells, and you're gonna hear. You're gonna see that um, what they look like. Mm -hmm. There, it basically means a bundle of sticks. So, these words came, and that was done by Christians. It was done by Christians. Mm -hmm. So these these words actually, th these Christians were oppressing them. And now what happens is that every Christian that you talk to, evangelical Christians in the U.S., Catholics, they always talk about how uh, the LGBTQ community is discriminating against them. Mm. Okay? By saying that, that, you know, them being able to get married is a violation of their religious freedom. Yeah. They were throwing them into fires and burning them alive for centuries, right? So this somebody, is somebody. Somebody might say you're doing what about is right now? Hmm? It's not what about it. It's a reversal. This is about the oppressed becoming the oppressor. 
That's yeah, it's a right. very simple concept. But it's not the same people. You're doing collectivism. And I'm, I'm, no, I'm giving an example. But right, I, okay. I don't know. Like, so, so just, the, just letting you know. I know, I know. I know what people are going to say. We'll say all kinds of things. Yeah. So there's a, you know, that's a, that's a really important thing. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and, you know, Martin po pointed this out with Scientology. Like, what's really interesting about Scientology is this guy, L. Ron Hubbard, uh, was uh, practicing a form of medicine. Right. What he was doing was he was practicing Dianetics and he was treating people with all this weird thing, theta levels and stuff like that. And they came to him. They're like, this is bullshit. Like, you know what you're doing? Oh, sorry. Can I say, okay, whatever. Um, this is BS. You know, what you're doing is uh, you're uh, t t taking, this is, uh, this is not licensed. You're not allowed to do this. It's not a legitimate practice of medicine. So you know what he did? Turned it into a religion. He said, "Well, actually, let's change it from Dianetics. Call it Scientology. Now it's a religion. This is a belief system. And not only did it become a religion, and they it got religious freedom to do exactly this, but yeah. on top of that, you know, they got tax exempt status. Right? They got tax exempt status. So, so this is this is actually goes to Farah's question. Well, you finished your thought, but I really wanted to go to Farah's question. But no, no, that's it. That's it. Um, we'll so there. here's the pro because Farah is asking first of all, what it, what is it meant by freedom of religion? Okay, and I think that that's the problem with this being its own category because it some it often means more than expressing your religion. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the example you gave shows why you get a lot of extra privilege by being categorized as a religion uh, above other ideas, right? Because if, you, if it's other ideas, if it's not religious ideas and you have the freedom of expression, the only freedom you get is to just express them, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to religion, when it, you know, freedom of religion, what does that mean? Freedom of religion means that I get to practice, I get to do certain things um, beyond just saying that this is my belief, like in just in, just an example that you gave, and all of a sudden, if anybody wants to come shut down your practice, now they could, now you have a lot of arguments to that. Oh, they are violating my right to practice a religion, right? This is a, a little bit more than just saying that these are the things that you believe, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's yeah. So that's why I think like freedom freedom of religion is not an, just a mere expression of ideas. It becomes freedom of practice of certain things that have just been, by some arbitrary reason, decided somebody has managed to successfully argue why this is a religion. And then again, what exactly that means, by the way, Faraz, is a bit vague, right? And that's why, because of that vagueness, people have a lot of opportunity to make, to protect themselves by declaring themselves a religion, right? And because that practice is more than just expression, uh, uh, it's, you know, a lot of other things that, you know, when it comes, some things that could end up being harmful, then if they could, if they, if it gets labeled as religious practice, then the, uh, the, the back and forth, whether, well, this is, this should be illegal because it's harming people and it's covered under other laws or no, this is religious practice and you, you know, um, and my freedom of religion gives gives me the right to practice this. Even if the side like this should be illegal wins at some point, the back and forth takes decades sometimes, right? And mm -hmm. just by just by giving them the weapon to make that argument that this is a freedom of religion, the 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 whole process of going from the lower courts to the upper courts and to the, the Supreme Court and then losing and then having to redo it again just is such a waste of resources and time and decades of people's uh, rights being violated and having to live under religious oppression. Just, you know, just removing this from them, this tool from them, and just to say, hey, it's just freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, and nothing else, that will save a lot of people a lot of headache, I think. So I, I completely agree with this, right? Mm -hmm. um, but go on. So Faraz is saying, uh, I will do some steel manning. I want to pray to God and have a place of congregation. Why should the government stop me if I'm not harming anyone? And the government can't stop you, but that's yeah. you don't need religious freedom to, to do that. You have freedom of assembly. That's what freedom yeah. of assembly is. That's in the First Amendment in the U.S. It's pretty much in all the constitutions. You're allowed to assemble. You're allowed to associate with people you want to associate with. So if you want to pray to God, you can have a place of congregation. You want to do astrology, you can have a place of congregation. 
You know, you want to talk about your love of knitting, as Armin said, you have a congregation. That doesn't mean you need a separate freedom for your love of knitting to express your love for knitting. So, um, yeah. Uh, Alex is saying religion attracts conflict because it competes with the government, especially secular government. Freedom of religion is a power sharing arrangement uh, with the government. So uh, the laicite, he's talking about the French um, uh, word for uh, the secularism and the French sort of brand. It's a little bit more than United Just States. Word. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a it's a specific brand. Uh, so he's saying that they uh, it's a a power sharing arrangement with the government, and that and that's a problem, right? That yeah. is a problem. That it shouldn't yeah, be because, a power. Sharing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a good point to make that these are this was. I mean, one. I mean, this is a good reason why we need to get rid of it. Like, this is not something that um, was an ideal. It's not a. It's not a good idea. The religion putting the freedom of religion there was is kind of like the government, the people that came up with enlightenment values. They needed to include this because of the influence that religion still had at that point. As the uh, influence of religion uh, gets lower and lower, I think it's a time for it's a time it's a good time for us to revisit some of these the way some of these rights were structured, and maybe be able to like you know just because something came out of the Enlightenment movement that doesn't mean that we're going to completely endorse it right like we're not going to be like everything that came out of the Enlightenment movement is gospel right the fact that maybe uh, even the Enlightenment movement was under the influence of the authority of religious and uh, religions um, and the pressure on the religions, even, you know, that, you know, that mean that might mean again, this, our, our support for enlightenment values doesn't mean that we're not going to reevaluate them whenever we get the chance. And this is us reevaluating one of the um, rights that came out of the enlightenment movement and considering getting rid of it. And Martha is saying, Oh, here, do you want to? Just... Yeah, this is a great question. So Martha skeptic is saying, uh, could promoting the Quran and Hadith or Bible be considered incitement of violence if not protected by religious freedom? Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, well, the the answer is I think that this is one advantage of religious freedom for the religious is that you're right. Like the stuff that's written in the Quran and the Bible, if it was written in any other book, or if Armin wrote a book uh, saying yeah. half the stuff, like, you know, we have gay people should be stoned to death or... Um, you know, women should listen to their husbands. I mean, it, it could be a big problem, but you know, Mein Kampf has a lot of things like that too. But like, it's it's actually legal. It's it's allowed. Yeah. You can you can get it in a lot of countries. So you would have uh, people being able to read it. But if somebody is out there promoting the book and going out in a congregation and opening up, uh, you know, this is what um, you know the H man said in 1942, uh, and he's just preaching that to people. Then. Yes, he might be uh, susceptible to. He might be liable for you know incitement to to violence, mm -hmm. and he might he might be. It depends. I, so, I what? think that Mein Kampf and the Quran and the Bible should be all protected. Yeah, um, I agree too. Under I agree. freedom, you know, for freedom of expression. I think the violence, the incitement of violence, that should be legal, if it's if it's specific call to action mm -hmm. towards an individual. Or a group of people, like well, actually, group of people. Oh, what they call Which fighting people. words in the U.S. Like it's called fighting, fighting words. Like when you. But doesn't the Bible or doesn't the Quran and Bible have fighting words though? It does. Yeah. It does. They have specific things saying go and kill people who do this, kill people who do that. Right. Yeah, but I mean, like the Mein Kampf, is like you right now in the United States, you could go buy the Mein Kampf on Amazon, and I think that's how it should be. Yeah. Um. So you should be yeah. able to buy the Quran and the Bible as well. So I think I the question that he's asking is that, you know, if you're promoting it. So, for instance, you know, you have somebody, you know, the way they open up the Quran and they say certain things are like, yeah, this is what we should do. Uh, the fornicator must be lashed a hundred times or something like that. You know, they'll bring up those verses. What if someone is out there in a congregation with a thousand people on a Sunday um, opening up Mein Kampf and saying, OK, this is how we should be treating the Jews. OK, that that would be. Uh, considered incitement to violence, but the Quran and the Bible are protected from that. In this hypothetical, specifically, they're protected from that by religious freedom, and they should not be. They should not be. They shouldn't be treated any differently than any other book. Um, all right, so I'm really saying my idea is low, so I'm going to bring the microphone closer. Mm -hmm. um, here. 
Okay, so so question: Why should having your own? So Alex is saying, uh, why should having your own opinion slash belief contested be treated as greater oppression than contesting the opinion beliefs of those who contest yours? Why privilege one of two opposing views? That I yeah, that's a good question. Okay, I guess I'm not gonna. I'm not going to highlight Susanna's comment because it has the F word in it, and I don't know how YouTube is going to uh, work. With oh, yeah. That. So I'll, I'll just read it out. She's saying that the... No, uh, be careful. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't say it. She's saying that the, the F word, the derogatory term for gay people, uh, was um, actually, uh, it meant burdensome. Like, you know, like this old woman is as burdensome as a bundle of sticks, that kind of thing. Um, and that's uh, I've I've heard of that, but I mean this uh, this bundle of sticks thing being thrown to build fires, like throwing bundles of sticks and fires, is actually a pretty well, as far as I know, pretty well documented thing. But yeah, I'll look into that too, Suzanne, and see if there's that. Is this the microphone that is being? It's working. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I I can hear you fine. I think it's okay. okay. Doesn't seem it's, it's no different from any other. All right. Um, so, well, uh, can I do? Can I actually, before I highlight more comments, can I actually uh, do some, um, maybe some concerns that I have? Actually, before I do two concerns that I might have with this, uh, let me give you some positive thing about this. You know how when we have when we're talking about religion and we want to advocate for the rights of atheists or blasphemers, um. You know, it seems like they're not included in this, right? Because when we said, like, yeah, a major source of um, oppression or silencing or prosecuting people for their views has been because of their religion, but usually done by other religions, right? But one of the main victims, especially these days, compared to other religions, is uh, are atheists and blasphemers, right? And it seems like when religious people are being prosecuted for their views, uh, it gets a lot more support and um, attention and people saying, oh, are their religious rights is being violated. Um, but when it comes to atheists and blasphemers or people or infidels or whatever, or secularists, uh, it doesn't seem to be getting the same level of backlash or attention when they are being targeted, right? Uh, and because this whole freedom of religion part is so such a popular um call to action you know call to action for people around the world for governments for world organizations to pay attention for the united nations it's because it's been very successful at protecting religious people non-religious people are trying to use to get on that bandwagon because like hey we need like some of this protection as well by saying that you know freedom of religion cannot be cannot happen unless we have freedom from religion as well so they have to do they just have to do two like a two step uh, argument and be like hey freedom of religion must also mean freedom from religion because freedom of religion would not be possible unless we have freedom from religion right but it's that just doesn't it just uh, you know doesn't flow as easily as just having that there for religious people freedom of religion right that is just like a such a powerful um you know message such a powerful calling you know call to action such a powerful you know uh, laws around the world for people to unite on and and a lot of non-religious people have been left out right so you could keep arguing that freedom of religion means freedom from religion but it would have been so much it a lot it was so much more powerful and so much easier for non-religious people to fight for their rights if they had something specifically saying uh, in you know human rights you know the united nations charter of human rights and other world organization uh, organization or other um, secular countries specifically saying freedom from religion and we don't have that right uh, but if instead of freedom of religion people keep for for you know get rid of freedom of religion and focus on freedom of conscience and then what you have then is that all these religious people in order the 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 branding the message that they need to keep promoting right to get their rights would be freedom of conscience do you know what i mean like they right now they don't have to promote our rights they don't have to even look like they're promoting our rights they don't have to even look like they are opening the door to us 
but when they're fighting for themselves because when they're fighting for themselves they're fighting for this uh you know banner that they're uniting under that is called freedom for religion right but if it was freedom from or, or for religion then all of a sudden when they're protecting themselves they're giving legitimacy and authority to an idea that would also be protecting us right now that's not happening right but if we take freedom of religion away from them now all of a sudden they all have to unite to, to be able to get their rights they have to unite under a new banner called freedom of conscience right mm -hmm. and freedom of conscience by itself includes freedom f of and from religion so now all of a sudden all these organizations all these religious groups all these governments that want to promote religion in the name of their you know with freedom of religion um what they do they have to hop over to promoting this idea called freedom of conscience and it's great because if they promote that instead if they want because they're going to need it because they're going to need it to be able to promote their crap but by promoting that all of a sudden now they're legitimizing and giving authority to an idea to a concept that will be protecting ex-muslims apostates infidels blasphemers um atheists, secularists, right? And now all of a sudden we get all these powerful, the Catholic Church, yeah. the, uh, Turkey, and every all of these people, all this money is going to go use an idea that the more this idea is popularized, we also get the benefit out of, from that as well. So that's another thing, but go on. Yeah, go no, on. no, I agree. I think it's just uh, that this whole idea of religious freedom is a way to... Uh, give yourself cushion, a cushion to be able to discriminate without the accountability, and not only without the accountability, but with benefits, and also not have to pay taxes. I mean, it's just overall, uh, it's just a, it's a bad idea overall. And I, I think it's a good idea. Like, you know, if we have freedom of religion, we always try to say all of the, you know the atheist people and the Freedom from Religion Foundation, they'll say, well, freedom of religion in the First Amendment also means freedom from religion. But it doesn't specifically say that. Uh, we should also insist on having that as a separate thing. Why is that assumed? That okay, mm. freedom of religion means freedom from religion. Yeah, um, but if you but if you say freedom of conscience, that is as both of those things are assumed. Yeah, right? yeah, and then freedom of conscience again. It's it's it, that's also covered under free 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 thought and free expression and and all of that. So, it's a uh, you know it is kind of interesting. I there's another uh, thing that. Um, well, I mean, I'll, I'll go back to uh, Martin's uh, article because, I mean, he actually covered pretty much all of the aspects of, of this argument um, where he's saying, and I'll, I'll read this out. Uh, he says, quote, moreover, what exactly is religion anyway? By enshrining the ill-conceived notion of freedom of religion in our constitution, our poor state obliges itself to practice cultural anthropology and even theology. Does every authentic religion have a creation story or belief in a kind of afterlife? Is a supreme being or religious service required? Is a holy book an, an essential ingredient? None of these characteristics is culturally universal. By the way, how many people do you need to form a religion? Is a single prophet's voice in the wilderness sufficient? Right? And that's another aspect of it. Like, how do you define religion? What is a religion? You know, when you say freedom of religion, uh, just uh, to anybody just screaming, uh, you know, crazy ideas from a street corner, right? Is that freedom of religion? What defines something as religion? So there's there there are a lot of uh, aspects to this. You know, pastafarianism. I mean, they've been trying to get uh, the it. it Look, a secular person goes in, wants to wear a pasta strainer on his head and get a driver's license photo, not allowed. Okay? Someone wants to go get a driver's license photo with a hijab on their head or with a, a yarmulke or kippah or something on their head, completely turban on their head, all allowed. It's okay. The privilege is religion. Right? And, and, it should... and, and, and it's not like this is a big deal for us, but it's supposed to show, this is supposed to show, like, we, it's not about, like, we really want a pasta trainer, uh, pasta trainer on our head, like, we really want, this, this whole experiment was to show the privilege that religion has, 
Not that this is an important right that we want to have, right? It's supposed to vi like visually show to you how ridiculous. Like if it, if it can tr be true about this, then imagine all the uh, because people don't get bored when you talk about rights that matter. So you get you you do an example like this so that people could visually see if this can happen, then it must be religions must be have, getting a lot of privilege in a lot of other areas uh, in the under the name of re uh, freedom of religion that it is not fair right yeah it's but, it's true like if you if i, if I go in because the whole point of on a driver's license on a national sort of identity documents is the idea is you don't want to obscure your identity you want it to be absolutely clear what you look like in your driver's license photo or any kind of you know identification document official identification document so you know if you have someone who uh, wears a turban on their head, they're going to allow you to do that. And you're going to be yeah. able to get your to think to, to done that way. But if I actually literally wrap a towel in my head in the same shape as a turban, and I go there and I tell them I'm not Sikh, I'm just doing this because this is my belief, uh, they're not going to allow me to do that. They'll be like, yeah, but my, my point is because a lot of people are idiots and they don't understand that it's not that People might ask, well, why? Well, why do you want? Why are you fighting for the right to wear a towel on your head? Like, why does that matter to you? Like, this is not about putting a towel in your head. This is about showing you that if the if this if this idiocy, if people can see, like, well, that's putting that around your head, that's religion, so that's allowed. But putting a towel around your head is not a religion, so it's not allowed. If that if if this is how the laws operate right now, then this lunacy must be affecting. Um, many other areas in our life where religions get privileged uh, over other people, right? Isn't it, isn't it so, uh, just as an aside, isn't it crazy that we have to worry about whether people are going to get it or not nowadays? You know, I remember when I was growing up, my dad, he used to get like uh, the New Yorker, Time, or Newsweek magazine, and they'd have those political cartoons. And then we would talk about it. He's like, here, look at this. Do you get it? Do you get it? What do you see? And they were subtle. They would have mm -hmm. certain things, and you'd have to understand what the cartoon was trying to say. And then, you know, because it wouldn't be obvious. And that was the best thing about it. Now, if, you know, the Babylon Bee shares some article, right? The president of the U.S. Did you see that? He tweeted right. the, the Babylon right. Bee is like an, uh, an onion type thing, right? Hmm. And uh, they were kind oh, of... Oh, yeah. Sorry, right, I didn't so, get it. Yeah. yeah, so he went and he shared and he didn't get it. Like, or when, you know, it's it's just... Amazing that you have to. You know, people are like, hey, people aren't going to understand this. You need to be crystal clear. Like it's just right. ridiculous. But yeah, so, but, but, yeah. but yeah. He, I need to do my devil's advocate on this really quickly. Okay, so Ali, even if everything you said is true, but we have to really quickly go over the comments as well. Uh, some more comments. Um, uh, but even if any, everything you said is true, the problem is two things. One, the optics of it is really against us right because you could make all this argument for like listen these the the rights that we care about is already covered under some other rights that already exist right mm -hmm. but at the end of the day you're going to give the muslims and the christians and every other religious person the ammunition to basically say the simple phrase they're taking our freedom away these people who are saying that they're on the side of freedom. These people who pretend that they w they want to protect Muslims or Christians, that they're on the side of enlightenment values. The phrase is like, "Hey, they want to take your religion freedom away. They want to take your freedoms away." And I know, I know, you're gonna say like, "No, listen, listen, your freedoms are not gonna go away." Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. You could make those arguments, but again, they get the headline. They get the headline that they're coming for your religion. The, your freedom of practicing religion, and or then visit, visit. they're gonna let their audience basically um, run wild, like they, their imagination. Oh my God! So what does this mean? They're taking our religion, freedom of religion away. They're gonna not let us uh, express our love for Jesus, uh, preaching Islam. Uh, they're gonna come and close our mosques or uh, churches. They're, we're not gonna be able to pray. People are gonna go to prison because they got caught praying or something. That, that's all their, you know. And I, they, the fear mongering is gonna be on their side. They're gonna be like, "Yep, they're taking our freedoms away, guys. They're taking these atheists. They're gonna, they're advocating for against freedom." I know you're not concerned, but again, optics matters when it comes to activism. Yeah, yeah no. Right? So what you do is you have to come up with creative ways to do it. Right? And the creative way to do it is that instead of saying, say, okay, we don't want to take freedom of religion out of the Constitution, but the phrase freedom from religion isn't actually in there, so we want to put that in. 
Okay, because now atheists and agnostics and religious nuns are are like nuns n o n e s are uh, you know twenty five percent. Twenty five percent of the, youth, the we're talking about the U.S. The U.S. population in Canada it's even more. In the U.K. I think it's even over fifty percent. In France it's over fifty percent. So we're going to organize right now. We're going to lobby right, our representatives to add freedom from religion to the First Amendment. They'll be like, freedom from religion is just part of freedom of religion. What's the difference? Well, no, freedom of religion is just part of free expression, free thought, free assembly. Mm. So. That, I mean, there's, there's. That, I'm just giving an example of a creative way you could go about it. It's like that, you know, what you're saying with the pasta strainer on the head. It, you, you're making a point that makes it obvious to people. You're not. You don't have to necessarily spell it out, but you can take an initiative that would drive a point home. So, um, that's one way to do it. There may be other ways to do it, but I, I think that it's a good um, thing uh, to start talking about. Okay, I think it's a good thing to start talking about. I know when I uh, when I tweeted about this initially, I was made aware of Martin's article, which is amazing. It was Martin? I met Martin when I was in Belgium uh, when you know my my book was translated there on, on the tour. We did a long interview. He published in Quillette, so I, I actually you know I'm very friendly with him. I'm a huge fan of his. So it was amazing to me that he'd actually written something like this. And I I think I'm gonna actually call him on the show. Uh, when we have it at a time zone, when when he's available, but uh, to talk about this a little bit more. But I really think that we should uh, push on this topic. Andrew Seidel, right? The yes, attorney. I saw. I saw. Right. He was agreeing with you on Twitter on this. Right, and, and and not only that, but he's apparently he's drafting out this argument for his next book, which I'm yeah. I'm really looking forward to. And I think that this is something that um, we really should. And this get is what behind. this is what his next book is going to be about, apparently. So. Mm -hmm. So this is that's very exciting. Okay, but my other concern is from the other side. So I saw the optics that it looks like for from the religious community and how they're going to use this against us to to make it seem like we're anti freedom. Um, but another optics that I'm worried about is from the other side, from the people who are against freedom. Okay, uh, so I don't know if it was uh, when we posted this episode on Twitter. I don't know if it was your tweet or my tweet or secular jihadist tweet. Uh, but I saw like one person is like, yeah, like. Somebody was like, "Yep, take exactly shut them down," and some other person was saying, "Like, um, yeah, this is why I support China." Um, so, <laughs> like, and again, the people, uh, a lot of the people, a lot of people who are in favor of actually oppressing religious communities, uh, they might use these narratives that now we're pushing of saying we're against <laughs> freedom of religion to be like to basically justify themselves and be like hey you think we're bad look at these so-called enlightened people they are taking people's re uh, freedom of religion away uh, so yeah. The, yeah the optics could be like used like again like i'm not, this is not even hypothetical just the tweet itself just the title of this episode and not, uh, again, uh, itself um got support from some people that are legitimately like they are actually against removing people's rights to pray <laughs> or express their ideas. Yeah, I, so. I think that, look, there's there's two, and that's something, I was having a conversation with my mom actually about this uh, earlier today where she was making the same argument. She's like, you know, you can't do that. It's a bad, people won't understand it. They're going to think that this is what you're, you're going to get the support from people who are authoritarians. And then I, you know, th there are two main aspects to this, okay? First of all, messaging is important, okay? The messaging mm -hmm. is that uh, in in societies where freedom of thought, expression, and assembly are enshrined in the Constitution, right? In mm. democ secular, democratic, liberal societies, freedom of religion is not just a redundant, right, but a toxic um, addition to it, and it should be removed. So that should be, and again, a yeah, more but, pithy but way. But again, of we have that. to be concerned. We have to be very, like, even though you're right, the only thing we can do is just to keep um, clarifying what we mean. But I think uh, we have to be concerned about how how this could be used and how people could the optics of it. Like that's something that we need to keep fighting for. Like that that goes with that's... anything, though, Armin. Like yeah. you know, when you say freedom of, if you have free speech, free thought, and then you have freedom of religion, people are like, oh, freedom of religion. That means that I can go. And uh, I can uh, advocate for putting for hanging gay people, right? Hey, was, Ali, please yeah. be careful. No, that's that phrase right there. YouTube is gonna flag it. I know. Okay, it. that I was a very 
Okay, that, oh, yeah. that wasn't a formulaic one, but still. So if you have, you can say that, you know, I can do this. I can do these terrible things to these communities. I mean, people can uh, interpret that. We can't really worry about how most people will, or how some people are going to interpret something with optics. The other, the second part I was going to say, aside from the fact that messaging is important and, and we have to be clear that this only applies to places where free speech and free expression is enshrined in these constitutions. Uh, the second part of it is that, Yes, I think this kind of messaging is good for people to start talking about the subject. You know, when you come out and you say, uh, we need to abolish freedom of religion, right, as a legal concept, you know, people will come in, they're going to have these arguments, then you're going to hear from other people who will tell them, no, this is not what it means. And those discussions will happen. The important thing is to have the discussion happening. Okay, mm -hmm. for the idea to gain steam, and that's just a classic yeah. thing with with pretty much messaging. All right, let's do some comments because we're about to, our time is about. Oh my to god, begin. this too flew by a lot faster than I thought. Okay, um, Alex is saying, uh, "quote unquote," religious people are widely presumed to be more pro-social and virtuous, but I could just claim that all my views are religious. They constitute my own personal religion and demand their protection, and that that is actually Alex exactly what happened with. Uh, Scientology. I mean, you had the guy who was a, a quack doctor who had his, was kind of developing his own brand of um, the medical practice that wasn't backed up at all by science, right, or by any kind of evidence, Dianetics. And uh, when he started getting cracked down on it, he's turned it into religion. And next thing you know, tax exempt status. He's got religious freedom to do whatever he wants to. Um, Susanna is uh, talking about, okay, I think we were talking about the etymology of the uh, the F word for, for gay people. Uh, she's saying burning sometimes, oh, oh, sorry, burning no. sometimes was a punishment for homosexuals in Christian Europe on the suggestion of the biblical fate of Sodom and Gomorrah, but in England, hanging was the method prescribed. So there we go. I'm just talking about how uh, they were discriminated against or actually executed. Um, and she's saying it comes down to the IRS making decisions of theology. Uh, LOL example Scientology. Yep. Yeah. It does. Uh, D. Uh, Boudreau is saying freedom of conscience won't be divine and therefore not the same level of uh, respect. Well, right? that's how, how it should be, though. That's how it should be. Yeah, that's how it should be. That's, I think, what we're talking about. The problem with this is okay, so again, respect is the key word, right? So you're talking about when, when we say people say we want religious freedom, right? They're not really saying we want freedom to practice our religion. We want to, they already have that. I mean, they already have that. They have freedom to express their religious beliefs and congregate and everything. What they're saying is they want everybody else to respect their beliefs, to respect them. And their beliefs should really not be respected any more than any other idea. Mm -hmm. that, that's what privileges one idea over the other, because that's where blasphemy comes in. That's where censorship of, you know, okay, you're discriminating against a religious group when you're all you're doing is just really criticizing the ideas. Um, Susanna is saying the Pastafarians should just sue the IRS into oblivion, like the Scientologists did, bully them in the courtroom. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's so weird for me that we live in a world where people who are supposed to, like, the officials that are responsible of collecting taxes are now, all, we live in a world that in the most ad powerful country in the world, the tax collectors are in charge of deciding whose ideas have divine legitimacy and who's done. Who is, who is, a, what is a religion and what is not a religion? That's what, this is what the world that we live in. And this is the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Um, well, I mean, you know, the, it has to start somewhere. And I, I, I think that this is actually a really good thing for, I mean, we do have strength in numbers, Armin. I mean, I just saw a, a comment here from Blonde Infidel was saying 49% of New Zealanders said they were non-religious in our 2018 census. I mean, this is 49% here. We talked about Iran, right, Armin? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that new survey from Iran, 40,000 people in Iran, like weighted, adjusted, a proper poll showing mm -hmm. that 37% um, of them, only 37 to 38% of them identify as Muslims say that they actually right. believe in the Islamic religion, Shias yeah. and Sunnis combined. I mean, that is insane. That is, Iran is a Muslim minority country. I mean, this yeah. is happening uh, all over the world. I mean, Canada, the, the U.S., the U.S., like 25% of people uh, in among millennials, it's like over a third, actually well right. over a third. So we have strength in numbers. I mean, this is the time. It's just yeah. that we have to just promote the idea that uh, it's important for us to start organizing. 
specifically now, and you know, with with things like this, it's it, like for example in the U.S., you've got this confirmation happening of this new like religious nut job Supreme Court justice, and when that is happening, those are the, that's the impetus that we should use to actually rile up and and to uh, mobilize uh, these uh, non-religious people, the huge number of non-religious people, uh, to come up. I and mean, it's a larger number of non-religious people in the U.S. than than Hindus, Muslims, Jews combined. Mm. Uh, it's a, there, we should be doing something with it. Uh, we're winning Murtad, demographically, we're losing politically. But exactly. Uh, Murtad Skeptic is saying again, religious people won't give up the rights because they're aware of the privilege it gives them. So it, it would take those privileges away. They just see those privileges as rights. And that, 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 you know what, that nails, that nails why this is such a toxic concept religious right. freedom because yes. it allows it makes people look at something that really is just a privilege the privilege is for you to believe in some giant invisible bunny rabbit in your backyard who tells you to do crazy things right you can take that call it a religion and you believe that it's your right to take yeah. that and have everybody respect it and revere it somehow yeah and that's exactly it. yeah that's the summary of this what the whole having its own separate uh, religion freedom of religion to be its own se separate category gives people the idea that their privilege religious privilege is is a right yeah that's it basically it. that's the whole summary that's great summary Murta. thank you um mars 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 is saying i'd love for freedom of religion to come about here in the u.s in the states mm -hmm. uh but come come about here or, no, he's a, he he corrected it below. Oh, come from uh, okay. So he's to, to get yeah. get rid of it in the U.S. Yeah. But with the conservative dominance of the Supreme Court, it won't come in our generation, especially with ACB's nomination on the horizon. And yeah, I know that's that's a problem. But I wouldn't be so, I wouldn't be that cynical because a lot of times, I'll give you an example, Mars. I don't know how young you are, but in my lifetime, I grew up at a time when all of us were homophobic in the '80s. All of us were early 80s, right, before anybody who knew what AIDS was. And then when AIDS came around, it was a big deal. Uh, we all were. And we changed. And the dominoes felt. If you told me when I was in fifth grade that men will be allowed to marry men and women will be allowed to marry women legally, and that 70%, according to a recent poll, 70% of the U.S. would approve of it, I would think that you're nuts, okay? But the, the way that the dominoes fell, right, were just because of more awareness because of art you know movies music because of like dialogue and then ultimately ultimately state by state that's what happened it happened one state then another state then another state and then it went so, so these things when they do happen when the dominoes do fall it happens very very fast all right guys no more comments just read alex is one ali let's finish this fast because i when i add the intro and outro it goes over an hour okay so alex okay, is okay. okay so alex is saying uh so this is the last one Yes, last comment. No more comments, please. Okay. okay. I mean, no more comments that we, you can still comment, but we're not reading it. Go on. <laughs> Alex is saying having one's, having one's cherished views challenged is often upsetting and hence arguably oppressive. Unfortunately, this can't always be avoided when people want to correct misapprehensions. And yeah, that's, you know, you can't please everybody all the time, right? Like they're, you know, they, they can, they can feel like it's oppressive, but yeah. it's not. I mean, there are there is a big sort of victimhood mentality uh, that people have, which is also kind of a form of privilege, like yeah, having yeah. a perpetual. We're oppressed because our feelings are hurt. Call call the ambulance. Our feelings are. Anyways, uh, guys, we need to wrap it up here. Uh, but if you're if you're listening to this uh, later, uh, that means you weren't part of the live stream. So if you're a patron, consider joining us in these live streams. If you're not a patron, become a patron. Link in the description so you could watch these with us live uh, on video on air, and we'll highlight your comments like we did uh, today. Um, and yeah, all right. I'm going to end this here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next time. The secular jihadists have been made possible thanks to the Illuminati and the covert support of Israel and the CIA. That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topic and guest suggestions. Or head over to secularjihadists.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you. Thank <laughs> you.